Minecraft is an incredibly complex game, with infinite possibilities and some seriously impressive creations, but nothing can come close to the power of redstone. With nothing but some red dust and a few iron ingots, you can open the door to a world that's created goliath-sized smart homes, working supercomputers, classic video games, and more. So in today's episode of Minecraft Uncovered, with the help of redstone legends Crafty Masterman and Benny's Cube, we'll be taking a look at the history, evolution, Evolution and insanity of Minecraft Redstone. Now, we could jump straight into the basic redstone history, but I'm going to take a wild guess and say that nobody's going to care about the impact of the observer block and comparator if we don't show why they matter. So let's put that off for a bit, because I want you to see some of the insanity that the redstone world has to offer. Creations you would struggle to understand in real life made with nothing but fictional blocks and some cherry colored dust. First up, computers. I'm sure if any of you have gotten into the more advanced side of redstone, this is where you made your entry. For me, this was about 8 years ago, with the release of LPG's interactive redstone computer version 1.8. Now, redstone computers had already existed for a while prior to this point, with creations from the likes of the redstone crafter, the internet for the win, and Benny's cube, more on him later. But none of them were anywhere near as ambitious as LPG for the time period. While the rest of the redstone community was operating on just a few levers and lights hooked up to a gargantuan CPU and memory bank, LPG decided to go with a design more familiar to the average player, combined with some actually useful and fleshed out functions to make the whole project worth it. At first, it was nothing but a keyboard, calculator, and day-night commands hooked up to a redstone lamp monitor, but as it developed over the next year, it became more and more impressive by the day. The calculator got more complex, the screen got larger, more commands were added, it had a graphical UI with actual icons like you see on a modern PC, and just for fun it ended up with both music support and video games, including basic trivia but also hangman and even tic-tac-toe with artificial intelligence to play against. Even today, this would be considered an incredible project with a massive amount of work put into it. But unfortunately, LPG took his leave from the Redstone community many years ago, and although I did try, I haven't been able to contact him over the last several months of effort. However, that doesn't mean his ideas were lost, because over the last few years, during the resurgence of Minecraft Redstone, computers have come back bigger and better than ever before. How about Torb's 1Hz Redstone computer that went viral last year? In terms of features, it's not much different, but the speeds were off the charts compared to what we used to have. Or even more impressive, how about the painfully titled Chungus 2 from just 5 months later? The 1 hertz speeds were the same, but this one ran Tetris, Snake, Breakout, Connect 4, Game of Life, and could even be used as a graphing calculator. Say goodbye to your TI-84, all you need for high school calculus is Minecraft 1.17 and an imagination. While we're on the topic of redstone games and other programs though, what about some of the incredible standalone minigames of recent years? Some games like Pong have existed in Minecraft for a decade and are just slowly improving, but you truly would not believe the level of complexity of these newer creations. Geometry Dash in Minecraft Redstone? Yeah, it exists. Flappy Bird? It's taken off of every app store, but not Minecraft. Pac-Man? Yup, you can play that too. Piano Tiles, Dance Dance Revolution, even the Google Chrome Dino game all exist playably in Minecraft using nothing but redstone. And let's not forget the, like, five different people that made Minecraft inside of Minecraft just to prove they could. As I said, insanity. Through years and years of hard work from such a dedicated community, Minecraft Redstoners have managed to bring some of the most beloved arcade and retro games in history to Minecraft. But they aren't the only ones with a track record for bringing the gaming to you, not even the only Minecrafters. Why is that? Well, this video is sponsored by Generations Arcade. Yes, a real world arcade, but with a twist. See, Generations Arcade just launched a brand new private Minecraft server with a super nice community, fair staff, and a lot more. For just $5 a month, you get a full in-world government controlled by the players, Minecraft buildings controlled by actual real-world businesses, and game coins that can genuinely be redeemed in the real world at the arcade's member shop. All packaged in a map that never resets and expands with each big update so you'll never have to say goodbye to your favorite builds. With all that, plus weekly events to keep things fresh, this is an SMP that you won't get tired of. Sound interesting? Yeah, I thought so too. So if you'd like to check it out, go to generationsarcade.com and get started. Now, back to the video. 
Let's move on from the computers and minigames, since other YouTubers have covered those in far more detail than I ever could. And now that you're hopefully thoroughly impressed, it's time to take a stroll throughout the history of Minecraft and see how time and time again, something as simple as a slime block can revolutionize the world of redstone. Redstone was not always as intricate and thorough a mechanic as it is today. In fact, at the very beginning of Redstone during Alpha 1.0.1, Redstone was nothing more than dust and torches with the classic basic ways to activate them. You know, buttons, levers, pressure plates, etc. It wasn't super useful at the time though, especially since redstone, or red ore dust as it was called, broke if you walked over it. A cool mechanic on paper, but very annoying in practice. Just three versions later, in Alpha 1.0.4, they figured out where they went wrong, fixed it, and changed the name to redstone while they were at it, because why not? It was a while though before redstone got any more updates, and throughout the entirety of Minecraft Alpha, that's all we had. No pistons, no command blocks, not even any repeaters. We had to invert the redstone signal with torches over and over to keep the line going without running out of power. It wasn't until beta that we saw redstone start to become the complex and captivating community we have today. Beta 1.0 decided to randomly swap the names of redstone dust and redstone, but the real changes began later in beta 1.2, which brought both dispensers and note blocks to the game to create traps, music, and much more. In the next version, beta 1.3, we finally got repeaters to get rid of the old inverted signal strategy for carrying redstone power a long distance, which made things way, way simpler and easier. Beta 1.5 brought some special rails, and then beta 1.6.6 modified glowstone a bit so that it could send power upwards diagonally, which made no sense, but opened the gates for a lot of vertical machinery, memory circuits, logic gates, and much more on the technical side of things. Beta 1.7 though, brought possibly the most revolutionary update to redstone we've ever seen, and it was all because of one man. Hippoplatamus. Hippo was a fairly early Minecraft modder, and during beta 1.4, he created the Minecraft Pistons mod. It was a really, really big success, attracting attention from the wider community and even YouTubers like Captain Sparkles. Not only that though, Jeb liked it so much that he asked Hippo for the Piston mod code to turn it into a vanilla feature of Minecraft. In beta 1.7, Pistons finally made their first official appearance in the game, and even through the many glitches they've caused over the years, their incredible versatility in displays, traps, transportation, and of course, the classic piston door cannot be understated. These things were and are amazingly useful. Soon after the piston mod was added to the game, Minecraft 1.0 was officially released, and over the next year and a half, we received redstone lamps, which were again super useful for displays, and tripwire hooks, which were behind some of the earliest redstone traps. Most importantly though, was the addition of command blocks in 1.4.2, which opened the doors to an entirely new side of Minecraft Redstone. Although they were somewhat controversial, with many Redstoners, including myself, choosing to forgo them for a variety of reasons, like being too different, too easy, or just too new. But that's fine, because in the next major update, version 1.5, Redstone was not just an afterthought, but the main focus. Minecraft 1.5 brought comparators, hoppers, drops, Hoppers, daylight sensors, redstone blocks, activator rails, and trapped chests to the game, along much more. These may seem like less useful additions to many, and some, like daylight sensors and weighted pressure plates, are somewhere between niche and useless but others were huge changes to the game. Comparators, for example, which nobody really understood, but everyone found a use for. Or the new hoppers, which were really useful for automatic storage, crafting, smelting, and more, along with being incredibly important in redstone timing because of the famous hopper clock that's still used to this day. Unfortunately though, after the 1.5 redstone update, things really started to slow down. In fact, over the next nine years, there were only five big additions to redstone. The first came three and a half years after the redstone update, and it technically wasn't even an addition to redstone, it was the slime block. Their original purpose was literally just to be bouncy, but during the 1.8 snapshots, Mojang decided to add some very unique functionality to them. If a slime block was attached to a piston, the piston could move not just the slime block, but anything it was touching. That seems like a pretty small detail, and it's definitely not used in every aspect of redstone, but this small characteristic of slime blocks was the basis for an entirely new type of redstone creation, 
flying machines. They started as nothing more than a glitchy line of redstone blocks that carried itself across the sky. But two years later, with Minecraft 1.11 adding the Observer to the game, those tiny redstone sticks transformed into full-sized redstone airliners. And the Observer's built up its own fan base in the years since. Not just because it can be used for airplanes, but you know, those are cool too. Anyways, no more updates for a while, but we did get the lectern in 1.14 that sends out a signal when you turn pages, which could be pretty nice for traps. And 1.15 added the honey block, which was basically slime block 2 electric boogaloo and ended up allowing stuff like this. 1.16 brought the target block, which was basically just a more complicated way to shoot arrows at buttons, but with some special redstone properties that are too complicated to explain here. And most recently, 1.17 brought the skulk sensor for the deep dark update, which effectively enabled wireless redstone for the first time in Minecraft history, sort of. And it's the newer additions like these that have started to revive the redstone community after years and years of being largely dead. But that raises an important question. We know how redstone itself has evolved over the years, but what about the community? Well, I was pretty into redstone for a few years, but I was never super involved during either of the huge peaks. So why don't we talk to those who were? For anyone that does not know, this is Benny's Cube, but I'll go ahead and let you introduce yourself for anyone that's unfamiliar. I am Benny's Cube. I did redstone way back in the ancient times, especially building Minecraft computers and especially making tutorials on how to build computational redstone and some other perhaps more advanced redstone devices for people who are interested in how to build that stuff. And that's basically what I'm known for, I think. The yeah. first video on Benny's Cube was uploaded on Christmas 2011, barely a month after the official 1.0 release of Minecraft. And by this time, the redstone community was just barely starting to grow. So how did you first get into redstone at such an early date? Oh, I actually got into redstone about three months before that. I saw a video from, I believe it was Lauren Swain who created the video for Red Game 1, the Minecraft computer. And me, being an unredeemable nerd, I looked at that and was like, oh my god, I have to know how to do this myself. Do you remember any of your first builds or what you started off with? Oh yeah, absolutely. My very first thing, the very first thing I did ever in Redstone was I started up a new world. I came into it, I literally knew nothing about Redstone, I knew nothing about computers, I knew nothing about circuits or binary. I, for somehow, I had seen someone make this very typical Redstone thing. They built an automatic sugarcane farm and that was really the first time I ever did anything with Redstone. That was sort of the early history of Redstone and the early history of Benny's Cube. But in the mm -hmm. decade since your introduction to Minecraft Redstone, hundreds, mm -hmm. thousands, tens of thousands of incredible builds have come and gone of all shapes and sizes. So what do you think your favorite Redstone creation is? That's a really big question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as you said, there's tens of thousands of different things with Redstone. I've participated in more creations than I can count. I've seen people, especially on like the Aura and RDF servers, they've built more things than I can count. One of the most interesting things, it may not be my favorite, but I always thought it was really interesting when people built games in Redstone. I don't know if those will be my favorite of all time, but those always had a special place in my memory. I've been around since 2015, but you've been around since pretty close to the Redstone community's inception. So mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, how have you noticed redstoning evolve over the years? Oh, that's a huge question. I could practically give a university lecture on how <laughs> all of that has changed over the years. I should say definitely at the beginning, I have to understand, at the very beginning of redstone, all you had was you had the redstone dust itself, you had redstone torches. That was basically it. And redstone torches with redstone dust is Turing complete, so you literally can do anything with it as long as you're patient enough and creative enough to put them all together in the right ways. Anything you wanted to do, you basically had to somehow figure out how that works. As time went on and mechanics gradually evolved, especially repeaters and sticky pistons were the first, I guess, big revolution. Everyone was into piston creations. Everyone wanted to see, oh look, you can make pistons move stuff around. That was a big revolution. Also a bit controversial because back in the day, pistons were extremely buggy. They would constantly work in all kinds of unpredictable ways, but also led into some really creative effects like Instant redstone was a big thing you could do with pistons that wasn't possible before. After that, I think the next big revolution was definitely the introduction of glowstone, discovering, hey, wait a minute, if you put redstone dust over glowstone, it flows one way 
not the other. That was a huge revolution. I knew early on that these were cool things, you could do a lot with them, but only about when I came back in 2017 or so that I really started people pushing this stuff to the limits and doing some amazing things that I never saw done before. Very glad to be here, I'm very glad I could contribute to your interview, and I really hope this video turns out to be everything you envisioned it to be. But yeah, thanks again, really do appreciate it, and uh, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day. Absolutely. I wish you a fantastic day yourself. MCBYT video. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself for anyone that's unfamiliar? I am Crafty Masterman, local dirt block, redstone connoisseur, human. I started YouTube in 2018 in the Minecraft Dark Ages when it was in the peak deadness of Minecraft. And now here I am, almost four years later if I can count, and, and getting denied YouTube rank. How did you first get into Redstone? Like, do you remember any of your first builds or what you started off with? Uh, I remember one of the first tutorials I've ever watched was on a self-building house by FedEx Gaming on Legacy Console Edition. I hear footsteps! Who's coming down? I don't really know how I got into Redstone. That's just the, the earliest thing I remember. And then the rest is history. The rest is history. I guess, I don't know. What do you think that your favorite redstone creation is? For any reason, by anyone, it could even be someone you made if that's your favorite. How have you noticed redstoning evolve over the years? Uh, people actually making good redstone videos. <laughs> that's a big, big change. Good point. Cause like, not, not, not to throw shade at redstone YouTubers right now, specific ones that you might know they they may be super smart and they're probably ha have lots of subscribers because they are super smart but their videos are doo-doo shout out to map at wings shout out to sammy yuri shout out to cubic meter it's been great wow. talking to you man and i it's genuinely amazing yeah i really Funny do appreciate engines. the interview well anyways goodbye all right later man Thanks so much for watching. Before I go, I want to give a huge shout out to both Benny's Cube and Crafty Masterman, who are both absolute legends at Redstone, as well as a shout out to Generations Arcade for supporting the channel and being great to work with. I also have a huge project coming up this summer. Updates will be in my Discord server, and I'll be streaming on my Twitch every weekend until the project is released, MCBYT Live. So in case there's not any videos for a while, now you know why. That's it. Appreciate all the support, and have yourselves a very good one. Peace.